Six months ago, I sat here and talked to you about my YouTube setup and the software, the microphones, the camera, all the stuff that I use. And in the last six months, there's not really anything in the world that uh, could have changed my mental state as a creator. Can't think of anything. Oh yeah, and also I bought a PC. And so I'm mostly using a PC now. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform for creators with thousands of classes in art, design, productivity, and more. In these crazy times, uh, I find that my schedule has been completely destroyed. And even though I have essentially the entire day to do anything I want, I find it very difficult to actually get started. One of the strategies that I'm using to get back into good habits and everything is going back to my favorites playlist and watching the productivity videos that I've saved there. The videos from Thomas Frank and Greg McEwen, uh, I need to go back to those and watch them and start implementing these systems. Uh, I got off track back in March and it's been so difficult. My kids are on like day 120 of spring break, so it's been it's been pretty tough. So whether you're interested in filmmaking or watercolor or productivity or cooking, there's amazing classes on Skillshare and I'm sure that you'll love them if you give it a try. Click the link in the description for two free months of Skillshare Premium. And after that, if you wanna continue on for a full year, it's only $10 a month. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So let's first talk about what things are the same. I haven't bought any new lights. I haven't bought any new camera stuff. Um, since December. So I'm still using the G7, which you can probably see right here, as my main video camera. I'm using that for every video. That's going into the cam link and I'm recording everything into the computer now. I'm not using the internal uh, memory card and I haven't shot any B-roll. I haven't gone anywhere to shoot anything in a really long time. Uh, so that's almost sort of permanently there. The other thing I did was change the position of the lights. So I have a bounce light, uh, like a reflected fill light coming uh, in on the camera side, and I'm using a brighter light on the far side of the camera. And I think that gives a little bit better depth than having the bright side close to the camera. I'm still using the audio fuse audio interface as my main interface, my only interface actually, and um, I'm still using that AKG D5 dynamic mic. I did a couple of videos with the SM7, like the what's new in Reaper 6 video. Uh, I was using that. I don't like how it gets in the way of my face to actually get a good sound out of it. And actually I got a whole bunch of buzz and noise uh, in those videos that I had to remove painfully. Towards the end of that video, I was talking about my streaming setup, and now it's basically the same, but that's my my every video setup. I'm actually using Streamlabs OBS, and that's handling my video capture for the desktop, all the audio, and the G7 video uh, coming through the cam link. Inside of Streamlabs OBS, I'm able to sync up all my video sources so it looks good on stream, and in post-production, it's actually a lot easier. My editing time has greatly reduced just because I'm recording um, with post-production in mind. Inside of OBS, I'm able to change camera angles and things like that. I can switch between a talking head sort of camera angle to having a picture in picture. And I used to have to do that manually. I would have separate video files, one file from the camera, one file from the screen capture. That did give me more flexibility. A lot of times it can just basically stay in one or two positions and being able to control it through the Stream Deck while recording actually saves me a ton of post-production time. And one of the nice things about recording with OBS is once you're done, I don't need to render out another file. So for the long recordings, that's actually saved another hour of uh, waiting for renders before I can even start editing. So I'm not using ScreenFlow at all anymore. I had really streamlined my process of recording the videos um, by recording directly to the computer using OBS. Unfortunately, the MacBook really doesn't handle that well. Um, so it would run hot the entire time and the fans would be loud. I could hear it in the room, I can hear it in the headphones through the microphone, and I had to remove that noise in every video and it was really annoying. And really the only way to avoid that is to get another more powerful computer. I was really close to buying a Mac mini 
getting any of the affordable Macs wouldn't really solve my problem of low video card performance because that Mac mini has a pretty weak video card. So really my only option was to get a custom PC. Couldn't afford a Mac Pro for like $10,000. I couldn't afford the uh, high-end iMac Pro, which would probably still have the same issues. Um, so I went with the PC. There's a link to a list of all the parts that I used for building this PC uh, in the description of the video. So I built the PC and I set it up and it worked pretty well. Um, I had good performance in OBS, much better than on, on Mac. And, um, and pretty much all the other software that I rely on, I had alternatives and things uh, that I could turn to. Plugins and things like that, that was all good. Reaper worked well. When I built that, I thought it would just be an extra PC that I use and I would record, I would actually use my Mac and then take an output out to that PC just for capturing. But then there's the issues of transferring files back and forth and all that gets annoying. So basically that PC, because it's more powerful, um, because I have these big monitors attached to it, it's just better for ergonomics, better for workflow to just stick with one PC. Um, one computer for pretty much everything that I do. I don't want to get too much into complaints about Windows because I do overall like the operating system. It's gotten a lot better uh, since I think 2011 was when I last used a PC uh, at home. Uh, I do prefer Mac. I, I haven't used the latest Mac operating system. Um, I, I just never upgraded past Mojave. Um, because I would lose, like this keyboard would stop working and some of my other peripherals I, would, I wouldn't have drivers for. And, you know, again, it gets more expensive. There are features that I miss from running Mac exclusively, but I'm too lazy to like transfer files back and forth between the two computers to actually, you know, take advantage of both systems. It's For me, it's more efficient to just kind of work through the issues on Windows and, uh, and just get the, the video made. And at the end of the day, I can get work done. So to be honest, I don't wanna get into all the, the differences between Mac and, and Windows in this video. Um, a lot of people have been asking why I switched. I tried to kind of put that into this video without repeating things that I've said in live streams and stuff like that. And, and I wanted to get kind of this perspective of, um, of what it's been like after a couple months of using it. Overall, positive. I miss Mac. I prefer Mac at the end of the day, but Windows 10 is a good option and you can definitely get a more powerful computer for your money. Now we're going to dive into the software side of things and specific things that I'm doing on Windows. I use the Streamlabs version of OBS because it integrates with YouTube chat uh, for a live stream much better, it has alerts and things like that all built in instead of using plugins. It's kind of a streamlined version of OBS. There's not as many um, plugins and user-made extensions for it. I think it's a better interface, and uh, and some of the options that you would never use are kind of hidden. So I'll switch over to studio mode, and you can see uh, the different scenes here. So G7 cam link is just my cam link. In the sources page, there's just the cam link. And um, you can actually use sources inside of other scenes. So when I go to the big camera scene, it's the G7 scene plus the chats and alert scene. It may be a little bit annoying to set up all these separate sources as a scene, but it makes things easier because um, edits that you make to the cam link scene, um, let's say I put a border on here or something like that, that would reflect in all of the other scenes that use the same things. So basically I have a big camera angle, which is just my camera full screen. Um, it's coming in at 4K and my capture size is uh, 2560 by 1440. Um, this video might actually be edited at 1080p um, because the intro or the main camera stuff earlier was 1080p, but doesn't really matter. Um, then I have another one called camera zoom. It just zooms in on my face and this helps me check focus. And that's actually one of the issues I've been having with this camera. Um, I've got it positioned just out of reach. And even with holding a pencil, I can't, I'm, I'm still like eight inches away from the focus button. Uh, I wish there was a way to, to focus on my face remotely 
because this camera doesn't have autofocus or this camera doesn't have continuous autofocus outside of recording. If you're recording on that camera, it doesn't send a feed out to HDMI. The last video I put out was kind of soft focus. I, I was like focused on the microphone and, and it's hard to tell. So the camera zoom scene helps me get that focus. And then I've got one for main, which is um, the one you're seeing now. This is my main monitor, with, which is the desktop capture. I have the option of bringing in my Mac through the network, uh, streaming video over the network. Um, and then I've got chats and alerts and also camera with a box around it. And then my thanks for watching BRB and starting soon scenes um, have an intro video plus um, some text and stuff. When I'm in studio mode, you don't actually see that. But if I'm not in studio mode, it looks like this. When I'm streaming, I have a pretty cool transition, which looks like this. You can set that up in the transitions. So use the stinger type. And uh, I just have a, a short recording of noise and static that I generated in Reaper. And then on the connections page, you would actually um, link those uh, transitions to the scenes. So we'll use this noise stinger type of transition between those things. Those don't really go into the videos. Those are just for when I'm streaming. Um, all the other scene transitions are with a fade. So if I go from main to zoom, or my main with a zoom, there's just a short fade. For getting audio out of Reaper, as I play my projects, I use the Restream plugin from Kakos. So I have this on the monitoring effects chain. It's always sending out. And I have this set um, to send local broadcast uh, to channels. In OBS, in my mixer, I've got Restream. I've got it on the default audio device. So it's just like the desktop audio. Or uh, I, th I think actually it's a copy of my, my microphone. But then in the filters, I'm using three gain plugins to bring it down to minus 90 dB. So that's, there's no sound from my voice uh, that would be coming through here. And then in the VST2 plugin option, I have the Restream standalone. This is only going to work on Windows. I was using Loopback um, on the Mac. And so if I play something here, you can see that the meters are moving in Restream. And in Streamlabs OBS, the meters are moving as that reverb tail uh, comes down. In my mixer settings, I've got everything set to monitor off um, other than the chat box, because I like to hear those alerts when they come in. I'm delaying my microphone and my audio from Reaper, 280 milliseconds, to compensate for the delay from the cam link. I think this sync offset is actually a little bit off. I think it's off by one more frame. I think it might actually be affected by the buffer size. So try not to change the buffer size or anything like that while recording. But I just wanted to show you that it is possible to sync all of your audio and video sources. Um, it can all be done inside of OBS or Streamlabs OBS. Streamlabs can embed up to six streams of audio into your video files. So um, each of these six is two channels. So desktop audio is going to two and three. My mic is going to one and three. Restream is going to two and three. And um, my alert box is going to two and three. So let's look in the settings for what that actually means. And output and audio. Track one is my voice. Track two is the DAW. And track three is the stream. So the stream output is output three that you see here. Anything assigned to three is what the stream will hear. Anything assigned to one is just my voice track, uh, channel one in the video file. And then anything assigned to two will be the second audio track in the video file. All right, so here's a video file that I captured. It goes into this folder. The actual properties of this is a uh, 1440p video at 30 FPS. Um, it has two audio streams. So what I use is FFmpeg 
batch AV converter. And using this, um, I've got, and so I would drag this in. I'm going to go to multiple presets. And in this window, I make sure that um, I've got my settings set. So I've got one for audio PCM24 mono. So that's going to be my voice track. I go to AAC Stereo Stream 2. So unfortunately, you can only get wave from the first stream of audio. I don't understand why, but the only way I can prevent errors is to actually export my DAW output as AAC. So this works. And so I'll hit Next and then Start. And this is done, so I'll quit. And so I've got my voice.wave. And then in this one, I'll just rename that to capture. On my Mac, I was doing something very similar. I had some custom FFmpeg script files that I would just basically drag and drop my video file to, and that would spit out my voice track and my AAC track for channel two. If I go to a new project in Reaper, I can drop in my video, I can drop in my capture, and I can drop in my voice. And usually I'm doing this into a template. I would set this video track to ignore audio. And then I'm only hearing the audio from those separate WAV files or the AAC file. So there's my voice. There is the audio from the screen capture in there. So I'll just make a selection and then mute that so that the um, I'm only hearing this track. So here are my settings for when I'm rendering a video from Reaper. I don't think I've shown this in any videos before. So um, project name .mp4, that's going to force an mp4 extension. I'm using the FFmpeg encoder, and this is the one that you add on to Reaper. Check my uh, how to install Reaper extensions video or blog post uh, to find out more about that. Um, using Qt MOV MP4 container, and the file size, the frame size is going to match my source, and my frame rate is going to match my source. I'm using H.264 at 100%. You can actually go above 100%. Uh, you could type in like 300%, and you'll get a, a higher bit rate, uh, also a higher file size. 100% works pretty well for me. If I'm making a short video for uh, just to share on Twitter, for example, I might have to put this down to like 60% and um, 720p. And then the audio I keep at the highest level, which is 320. You can do wave, but AAC is fine for me. One kind of an annoyance is even though I have a faster processor and a better video card, um, having to use FFmpeg to render is actually slower than on my Mac with the AV Foundation uh, encoder in Reaper. So kind of annoying, but at the end of the day, I'm still rendering uh, very quickly, like maybe 15 minutes for an hour long video. That's not that long at all. Yeah, and I'm happy with that. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video and thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.